Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. How are you? Wherever you're at, it's Krim Jackson. You're live on the set. We're getting into this today. You guys have been asking me. So I want to tell you guys about how to quit your job, outsource your business, and leave the country and survive. This is exactly what I did. So I'm getting into that right now today. You guys like this and share this with your friends. We're doing a mic check real quick as usual. Um, we're working. We're working. You guys tell me out there. You hear me out there. Fantastic. Fantastic, you guys. I'm so glad that you guys are here loving this. Like this and love this and share this with your friends, you guys. It's Kareem Jackson and you are live on the set. So keep that in mind. We're getting started right here, you guys, right now. I want to go ahead and just touch base with you. You guys, share this, like this, send this to your friends. We're going live here about how I got free. I outsourced my business, quit my job, left the country, the America, the country was America, and I freaking survived. So that's what we're talking about today. Like this and share this, send it with your friends, and we're going to get into it. Success is for everyone. You're special. You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson. Kareem Jackson is here. Turn your dreams into reality. Remember, baby, success is for everyone. Live on the set. New shows weekly. Hey, you guys. What's up? It's Kareem Jackson. You're live with me. I'm so glad to see you guys. Really great to hear you guys out there. I'm so glad that you're here with me this week. Um, If you guys are on LinkedIn Live, what's up with you? I'm Kareem Jackson. You're live on the set. You guys, hey, hey, hey. If you're on YouTube Live today, we didn't go on Facebook. We're doing like a new little thing today. We didn't go live on, on Facebook, but we're live on YouTube. What's up to you guys? And of course, you're CareemAntonio.com, you guys, at my shows, live on my show network there. I appreciate the love, y'all. Y'all been asking for this one. You been asking for it. It is amazing. So I have the, the papers, Joe. It, I'm amazing, you guys. I'm getting my little paperwork here, you guys. We are getting into this today. You guys have been asking me how the hell I got free, how I did it. And again, outs.us are fantastic sponsors. These are the guys that always give me the insights, the content, the things you guys are liking. And we just see you guys are really crazy active at CrimeAntonio.com. The love is amazing. The love is amazing. Um, if you're here, you can chime in. You guys got my stuff here. This is a big one. Oh my Lord. Lord Jesus. Um, this is going to be a great show today. You guys to reboot from before you guys, um, the reboot to kind of tell you guys how I did it to kind of get you as inspired because you guys, the, it's okay. First of all, I'm Kareem Jackson. You guys are live on the set. I help woke entrepreneurs to minimize their cluttered lifestyles, to outsource their business processes, to make more money, more profits, and live their dream life while they do it. Boo-boo, that's what I do. I've been doing it for 10 years when I outsource my company. This is an amazing opportunity because right now, many folks, and Black is trending, Black folks especially, women especially, Black tourism in America is best, supposed to be the biggest in history of the world for Black folks, okay? coming up this year, whenever they open America and people can travel around. They're expecting a big, huge boom. Tons of folks out there opening up black travel agencies. You guys know about our Black Freedom Magazine that's showcasing black entrepreneurs and black people around the world doing phenomenal, kicking it, doing their thing, dipping and doing all over the world, living lifestyle, not tourism, y'all. It's not a tourism magazine. It is a travel, but it is a lifestyle publication that showcases black Americans all over the place. So you guys have really been asking me a lot, like over the years, I'll get a whole lot of questions, but like in the last six months, um, and then now since we've doing this outs.us promotion, you guys have really been really asking me this situation about how the hell I did it. How did I get out of there? How did I get free? Because a lot of you who knew me before, you knew that I had a big, huge offices. I had all these things going on. I had about 100 people working with me in my business with a 10,000 square foot office space um, in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. I had an award-winning resolution from the U.S. A recipient magazine there in Kansas City. My family had construction companies. We had all kinds of things going on, but I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And the recession hit in 2008, and I kind of saw my exit. It's like it is now for a lot of people, but now it's global. But at that time, I saw my exit. And a lot of folks maybe it didn't affect them as much or it affected them a lot. And if you were working government jobs and things like that, you still got your paychecks. If you were teachers and things like that, it wasn't like this recession that we have right now, right? So I got free and I literally walked away from everything reinvented my entire self, did some things that were luck, a little wisdom, a little blessings, a little glory inside of there, and that ended up working well for me. And I've been, that was 10 years ago. 
10 years ago. I've been a minimalist CEO. I've been a laptop CEO was where I first called myself um, for 10 years almost. Um, crazy amazing, crazy amazing. Another caveat is that I leveraged to where there was a recession in America at that time, right? So we didn't have any American clients. We literally had lost all of our clients, literally hundreds and hundreds of clients from AT&T to Sprint and GlaxoSmithKline all the way down to Billy's Barbershop. Shout out to you, Billy Rhymes and KC Mo. Um, we lost everybody and we reinvented ourselves and leapfrogged into a situation that I never dreamed imaginable. So I'm going to tell you guys all about that today. We're getting into it. If you're just joining in, I see a lot of you guys. We're up here talking about how to quit your job, outsource your business, um, leave the country, and survive, do very well, maybe even not even survive. I, I've been chosen to do the who's zen and, and relaxing life and all of that stuff like that. Whereas a lot of folks, you may choose to be rich and bougie out there. I'm not sure, but you have your choices. You can do that as well. Thank you guys for listening. I want to give a shout out to Brother List watching right now, or at least commenting right now. Um, Juma Bannister, you guys, a brother out there teaches useful things about digital content creation, um, video photography, branding, marketing. Um, this brother is in Trinidad. He's doing some really, really kick-ass stuff. He's doing some great things out there, and I'm real proud of him. I want to get on here. He's going to have a new show. He's new to LinkedIn Live. I'm semi-new to LinkedIn. I'm new, I'm new to LinkedIn. I'm still new. Still no new. But we're trying to do a situation where we showcase more of our folks, small business entrepreneurs, black, female, minority entrepreneurs like that, on LinkedIn, showcase them on our shows, because I, I think a lot of small business entrepreneurs, especially black folks and females, they don't get the glory. And a lot of you guys are the ones that would benefit the most from actually getting out of Dodge. And I never thought that it would benefit me as much. I never really understood it as much. I kind of innately knew that I could I could be struggling anywhere in the world. So why am I struggling there during the recession? That was all my mentality. Um, I jumped online by by accident, um, technically, because I was traveling and I knew it. So I had to get kind of a website going. I had I couldn't bring all my magazines and all my resumes and things with me. So I dumped all this crap on a website and it helped me get free. So a lot of you guys, now that you see that we're bouncing back, we're helping clients out there, and we've actually pivoted to where we have hundreds and hundreds of clients around the world now. We haven't had American clients until recently, this last COVID thing, in almost a decade. So we were able to pivot our business and to really thrive globally with clients from Australia, from Europe, from the UK, you guys, um, from Africa, from the Philippines, from all over Asia. It was a really phenomenal thing. Australia as well, you guys. So I wanted to each one teach one, you know, my model, you guys, each one teach one is my thing. So I want to make sure that I give you guys the information because I think that that is the key to it. Um, one of the biggest fears you guys in life is when it's, po when it's positive change is um, so, in life, one of the things that most people fear that I notice, this is around the world, and this is a global pandemic we're bouncing back from. I know a lot of you folks, you're balling out there, your life is perfect, and I ain't talking to you. I see a lot of folks on, on YouTube, a lot of folks on LinkedIn, all over the internet, talking about how great they're doing. Everything is perfect. <laughs> they, 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 they're not experiencing nothing. Um, well, there's 100 million folks that are. And there's 40 million folks in America that were faced with the, like, the evictions. There's still about 10 or 20 million that are out of jobs. And of course, the folks that are going back to work, is that full time? Is it part time? Are you scared? Right? So, you guys, hey, outs.us. So, I understand one thing is that one thing that everyone fears is change. Even if it's positive change, it's a fear that folks actually have. And I'm going to tell you this too. I had the same situation because back in the day, you guys, I didn't know what was my company, what was my partners, what was my investors. I didn't know. Did folks really like me? Did they really like my ideas? I didn't know what part of it was really me. So when I had to do all of this, I was going on an uphill battle because I was not sure if it was me that they liked, if it was what I was doing that they liked. So one of the biggest fears in life is change. And I had to really change myself. And I knew that it was positive change, but it was a big ass change. I had to make some serious adjustments. Um, relationship busted up. <laughs> you know, the partnership busted up. I was literally leaving my boardroom and going waiting tables, you guys, or doing working banquet halls at country clubs in the afternoon and the evenings, trying to figure out and re-pivot myself. I really was. There was no ROI from the companies in 2008. 
we had this great company, these great offices and everything was fabulous, but we had no return. We barely could pay anyone that we even owed. And it was a big dramatic situation. So a lot of you folks, a lot of folks during the 2008 recession, their companies closed down, they were never heard from again. So, um, so understand, and the sacrifice is one of the mental blocks that keeps us from trying new things because we don't want to sacrifice. We don't want to change you guys. Um, one of the biggest things also too is chasing our dreams and stepping into our real power. That's really hard, you guys. We've not been trained as Americans and Westerners, especially about chasing our dreams. And believe it or not, in America and the West, especially in America, we are more inclined with freaking chasing our dreams than anyone in the world. You know how hard it is for people around the world, second and third world countries to train for the Olympics, <laughs> to train for singing, to train for being a gymnast, to, to train for you know bomb sledding and, and all that crap to go hone your craft of modeling or acting or anything like that. If you wanna be a cook or a chef, it is crazy hard. We have it easier, no matter how you feel, you got it way easier in America and in the West, like UK and you know, than anyone in the world. So believe that. And that's one of your powers of your freedom. You keep that in the back of your head, that's one of your powers. So the truth is you don't really need to choose to be in or out of America. That's another falsehood, you guys. Um, you can just take a hiatus. Take a break, you know, get away from the, the, the racism for a while, get away from the bigotry for a while, get away from the, from the spouse. Maybe you're single, you're new, you don't know what to do, you're a single mom. I got clients out there, I'm not gonna say your names, but your man left, you free. So take this time when the, when the borders open up and you can travel around to get away. Take your business and your dream, take it global. Don't look at it as leaving, look at it as expanding. and invest globally. Right now, we're going to get more into it, but a thousand dollars equals 45,000 to a hundred thousand abroad. Let me say that again, y'all. A thousand dollars equals 45,000 to a hundred thousand abroad. And I don't mean Mexico. Okay. I mean like abroad, like Asia, Africa, abroad. Keep that in mind, okay? Not Canada, not the UK. Niger, the pound is higher than us. The Canadian dollar is a little lower than us, right? But if you go to Asia, Africa, anywhere on that side of the world, like these folks you know that are outsourcing to China and getting their ties done in China like Donald Trump, right? Putting resorts in the Philippines like Paris Hilton, they paying a thousand bucks equals 45,000 to 100,000. And you wonder why they balling? Um, I believe it's the, I believe it's, it is so, uh, let, me, let me rephrase this. I believe that it's not very smart to invest all of your money, all of your time, nor your efforts into one thing. And you should diversify. We all have to diversify. If you're working right now, maybe that means two jobs. Hopefully that means a small business and a job. Diversify, not more of the same, different diversify. Okay. The same thing goes in America. I believe that right now, especially black folks out there, minorities, women, we can't afford to only invest in America. You see now, ain't stuff changed from our great grandparents to our grandparents. We live in better. We got bling bing, but we still in the plantation. We still fighting for rights. We still trying to figure out how we can vote. We still trying to figure out how we can not get killed. And you guys, that is post-traumatic stress. That is a crazy way to live. And people look at Bali and Asia and, 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 and all these different places, Ghana, right? And they understand they ain't worried about that. That is not their worry. They're worried about food and, 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 and family and, and health and things like that. You know, and that stress that we're under until you leave, and I mean leave, I don't mean go to Jamaica, y'all. I mean leave. You don't have any idea the stress you're under, especially black men especially black women. You don't have any idea about that. So most black Americans are all in America and they're all in the Democratic Party as well. You've literally doubled down everything you have. Everything that's attached to you is in America and the Democrats. And mind you, you guys, I'm not saying anything against either one of them. I love America. But you, we, sh we always, we're the most patriotic people out there as black folks. White folks, they got summer houses in Paris. <laughs> they got winter homes in the in, in the Alps. <laughs> they do. They Paris Hilton has a resort in the Philippines Island. Trump has a building in Manila. Okay, McDonald's is all over the world. That's a that's that's Ray Kroc. But when we do it for some reason, we feel guilty. 
So I think we need to abolish that. And also, I believe that just as whites do, we need to have our passports. We need to research, invest, venture, and possibly have dual residency between the U.S. and some other another country that you know that you love. That you know have your roots, you know, in friends or family. You know, um, it's it's also your right as a citizenship as an American. Um, and most parts of Europe, it's your right to be able to travel the world visa free. That's why you're going through all that. That's why you broke paying taxes. That's why you you had the number one situations in most things because you have worked to, for the right that that little blue passport gets you in anywhere. The problem is most of us black folks, small business people, we never use it. We think that Jamaica is going somewhere, Hawaii is going somewhere, a cruise is going somewhere. No, it ain't. And I don't mean a vacation. I'm not talking about vacations here. I didn't leave for a vacation. I left with my business. I left with ventures and things like that. So while you're landlocked and you're struggling right now, people, um, and you're a slave to your job, you, you know you are. If you can't quit, if you couldn't survive Corona, if you needed any of those checks that came out, if you didn't send that check back or just use it and save it and put it in savings or pay off your credit card debt with it, you were slave to that job, boo boo. Okay. So your career, maybe you're a slave to that um, and or the lifestyle that you live, maybe locking you in and keeping you a slave as well. The lifestyle that Americans have pushed on you. Every penny you get, you got to go spend. Every week, you got to go shopping. Every weekend, you hop in the car with the family, you go around to every yard sale you can. For what? Your house is full of shit already. Your garage is full. What are you shopping for? What do you need? You're a slave to that lifestyle, perhaps. Um, and there are more than 5 million, you guys, um, entrepreneurs, businesses, and another 20 million Americans just working globally. So you ain't the first. Um, if you're black, minority, female, well, not really female so much, but black, we yeah, have female too. Yeah, if you're black, minority, female, and I mean Latino, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, we're late. We're late to figure this out. So it's not a crisis. It's an opportunity for you. Um, in the Philippines, for example, where I am at, I'm right here at the Writers Retreat Bungalow right now, you guys in the Philippines Islands. Um, there are more than 20 million um, working around the world that are OFWs. That means overseas foreign workers, Filipinos. Why don't we do that? I don't understand why we don't learn that, especially when you're young. And if we do, it's a cruise ship or it's something temporary. You don't really invest. You don't open your salon in Ghana. You, you know, you don't have a party planning company. You know, you don't organize weddings in Dubai. You know, we don't do that. But if you're an American, you travel or whatever, you can do business anywhere in the world. And most of the world, they speak English or they need to speak English. If you're in any IT situation, IT is in English. Media is in English. Dot com is American. You know, not dot EU, not dot, you know, PH, not dot, you know, Africa, you know, dot com is us. So we're the top everywhere. So why don't we go around and really utilize that? Um, where the Filipinos, you know, they, they woke me up a little bit back in the day. And if you guys know any Latinos or Puerto Ricans or anyone like that in the U.S., you know, and you know they're sending money back home and you're wondering, well, how do they do that? And then Filipinos in the States, if you know some nurses, maybe some IT people, some business managers, things like that, then you really know where they're sending money back home. Well, back home, they, they ball it. They got a mansion, a business and everything working next to you and you struggling. So just think about those things. Those are paradigm shifts that I made because they're sending money back home to their families. They're using that to make their families into millionaires. Peso millionaires, for example, or Naira millionaires. Are they making, you know, if you're in, in, in Africa, maybe you've got some shillings. You know, there's some, if you're in, 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 in Jordan, you've got pounds there. I don't know, I think they call it Jordan pounds or whatever, but, but if they're sending money back home and they're making their family millionaires. Whereas we're going to be, you, you might be working hard and going to die broke or broker. Why can't we do that? Why can't we go around and do the same thing? And I wondered those things. Those are the things that I asked myself. And then at the time when I was outsourcing my business, what issue was is I couldn't afford to pay the $80,000, $100,000 per issue nut for the print of our magazines. And the magazine was not our main business. It was our most popular part of our business. That was killing me. I really couldn't afford the $80 an hour for graphic designers a decade and 15 years ago. And that was in the Midwest. I don't know what they pay in California. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where I grew up. So understand, 
I had some hard choices and somehow I stumbled on the dollar conversion rate. I stumbled on some Filipino friends um, that, that enlightened me, said certain things. I saw how they lived. I wonder how they do that. And then I just started Facebook, right? Meeting people and it changed the game for me. So I want to talk about this, you guys. I want to get into this today. I want to talk about this with you guys. You guys have been asking me how I did it. And I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to get back into this. Um, if you guys are just watching for the first time, I, I appreciate that. You can chime in, in the comments. I can see your comments here. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory about me. And then we're going to get right into these aspects, you guys. Um, a little bit of backstory to let you guys see how I, who I am and what I've done. Um, you guys can, of course, Google me and all that stuff too. But Noel, I see a lot of you guys here on LinkedIn watching that are new to me. They don't really know what I do or, or what I'm doing or what I've done um, and what I want to do. Nothing about me. A lot of you folks have been watching me for years. Um, you guys know already. But I've been blessed to grow up with the global family business. So that was my blessing. My family had businesses and then they went global as well. They left America and went to Nigeria open their businesses there because of the racism in the States. Um, Black Americans, you know, back in the day, I grew up, my family's also the Haley family. Shout out if you're watching now, David Haley, um, uh, nep great nephew, uh, Senator um, David Haley. Um, if who wrote the Roots book, the Roots saga. They're the, they're the ones who did that. And at the same time, when we were in Africa, they were in Africa researching for their book. There was no, you know, Ancestry.com at that time. And writing the book, which became Roots, which became the movie and all of that great stuff in the series that's out now. Um, those are real people. And those people were a part of my life. And so me, David, we were kids at that time. We grew up seeing black folks doing stuff. And we saw them, even though they were successful, college graduate, my father graduated as a basketball star at KU. So did all of my uncles. You know, shout out to the Jacksons in Kansas City and in California and Las Vegas. Love you guys. Miss you guys. My sister out there, the Jacksons in Texas. Shout out to you as well, family. Um, but my dad left because of racism. I grew up as a kid sitting in the car doing my homework because I was a geek already when I was young, in the car doing my homework or the truck doing my homework while he picketed, you know, San Diego State, UCLA, the city of San Diego to give black folks contracts as contractors before the minority certification was in, before all this diversity and inclusion. I was the kid in the car doing homework while dad was picketing to feed us, you know? And I'll tell you this, what I saw was when we were abroad overseas, when I was younger, we did very well. Didn't experience racism. I went to American International School in Lagos. A big shout out to you guys for the great education. Um, then when we came back to the States, all this crap started again. My dad's picking it on the street. Um, you, you know, it was a hard thing to see. My dad is six foot four, six foot five, good looking, you know, wealthy abroad wealthy abroad came back to the states i think mom got sick something like that like you know grandma got sick his mom something like that just came back you know there was a coup things weren't stable in nigeria at the time and we were there as a guest um to um to general decola who at that time who was tossed out so it wasn't a good person to be connected to at the time when the coup came but they showed me a whole different life. I came back in the seventh grade sixth grade lost la mesa elementary in san diego um woke as fuck. I knew I'd seen black bank presidents, black country, no matter all the crap that we see Africa going through, it's still black folks problems. You know, it's still, it's things that it's not like another oppressive situation. So I came to the States, I was already woke doing my thing, but I would be studying after school. He picked me up. I go hang out with him, right? Hang out with my dad, you know, me and my dad were real close. He, you know, played basketball with folks. He was really cool. He knew very, we knew, we worked with a lot of celebrities back in the day. He was a talent manager also. So I grew up also, I was in the room when, when Barry White recorded his song, when he, when he first got out of his, his album, when he first got out of jail, we're the ones that went to the prison jail to pick him up in the limousine. Uh, I grew up with Cool in the Gang, Shalimar. You know, these are just people that I grew up with. Third World, all of these great people. Babyface, MC Hammer. We're the ones that opened the MC Hammer troop stores um, back in the day. So it wasn't like my father wasn't a successful person. But you know why he was successful? Because he picketed. He was telling them, begging for work from these white folks. And he didn't have to do that when he was abroad, but he, he, I need to come back to the States because at that time, American International School didn't have a high school program. Later, I learned that 
that we came back so that I would continue a great education. And he had to deal with the stuff that in America now, it was back in his face. But I was great. I was educated well. We lived on Mount Helix in, 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 in San Diego. We were the first black family on Avocado Boulevard, baby. Um, so the whole reason I'm putting this out there is so that you guys understand why I left and why I got rid of it, why I changed, isn't just because I was one to go somewhere and be that. And I think a lot of folks out there, especially blacks and minorities, small businesses, you can relate to this. I'm gonna get into this, you guys. So before you think I was some spoiled rich kid, by the way, I wanna let you guys know that. Um, we went global because of, 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 of racism. There was no diversity and inclusion. <laughs> there was no, there weren't even many Africans in the States yet. When I came back to the States in sixth grade, they pronounced Nigeria Nigeria. Yes, they did. They called it Nigeria, y'all. <laughs> and of course, Niger, you know what they called that one. It was, it was nigger. And as a kid woke coming back, I felt like, well, maybe, you know what? So maybe that's where they got the word nigger from. <laughs> They didn't really know how to pronounce it right. And then they came back using this derogatory slang and pronouncing Nigeria and Niger wrong, which is where a lot of the slaves came from. on um, the Niger River, Nigeria. Anyway, another, another subject. But I came back pretty, pretty woke. So my uncles, you guys, one was a singer, one was an actor. Um, my, my uncle um, with my aunt, Auntie um, Judy, shout out to you, um, was, you know, the black light skinned guy, Tibbs in, in Miami Vice. You know, my great grandmother, shout out to you if you're watching this too, Grandma Francis Coche, jazz singer in Los Angeles. We were not a whoop de hoop de, you know, family, but we still faced racism and discrimination and all of those things. So um, I just want to say that to you and set the caveat so that you guys can see that. Um, you guys can see what we're going to be getting into, what we're going to be talking to and things like that, because I think that it's a thing that that I need to set up because I don't think a lot of folks are leaving nowadays um, because they just, you know, they're just tired of America. No. Right now, there's a lot of issues going on and a lot of families out there um that are really, really struggling right now, they're struggling because they need to really, really pivot. I believe that right now, I, I think that a lot of times we're reactive um, and I think that we need to not be reactive. I think that we need to stop being reactive. I think that you need to realize is that your white counterparts, they don't look at international business as a crisis. It's what they do. If you travel the world, Taco Bell is everywhere. FUBU is in the mall. Levi's has stores. Wrangler has stores. Nike has stores. You just don't see us. So I'm just putting this pivot out there, setting this up. So when we get into this whole thing today, I want you guys to really understand where I'm coming from, especially if you're looking and you're watching from LinkedIn. Um, big shout out to you guys on LinkedIn. I love you guys. Thank you very much for all the comments. Thanks for watching you guys and liking and everything. I really have gotten this question. I want you guys to understand that sometimes you just gotta leave and get a break and take, take, take your own time, take a hiatus and go out there and really say, okay, you know, let me control my own situation. Let me get myself out there. Let me really go forward and really make it to where, okay, um, let me let me control my own life. Um, and I think a lot of us, we really forget about that. We really forget that at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, this is our, we got one life. And if someone's telling you, and for me, it wasn't black folks. I was blessed when I was going through the recession that someone had mentioned to me, if I remember correctly, that they were printing their publications abroad. This is before we knew about China. This is before there was the web fed printers and things like that. So it was really like, oh, wow, really? You doing that, right? So I just wanna really say to you at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, that that's where this whole thing is coming from because the how I did it, the why is more important than the how, because I think a lot of you can relate to the why. And then now we're getting into the how, <laughs> how I did it, the, the good, the nitty gritty y'all. So I want just to get you that set up. I wanted to get, bring you into my world. Um, I wanted you guys to, to really see what it was um, that I was trying to do. And if you guys have not done that yet, why don't you guys go ahead and take some time and go ahead and subscribe, share, like, 
put all this out there, you guys. Show me some love um, because I really want you guys to always get these things. I always kind of put this stuff out there. I always kind of have these, try to have these topics that anybody can learn from, anybody can be inspired from. But I do try to give a little black minority spin on it because a lot of times the information, we don't get the information. We don't know what's going on. We don't, we don't really get what it is that we are missing. We don't know that around the world we're beloved, we're respected, we're, we have a lot of opportunity. But I do see a lot of black folks out there are noticing it now because the Black Lives Matter. They're noticing that because they saw the world standing up for Black Lives Matter. So the black folks are sitting there going, damn, you know, wow. So they don't hate us. <laughs> you know, the world doesn't like us. We, they don't see us as niggas everywhere. They don't see us as, as something negative everywhere. And I think that woke a lot of my brothers and sisters up. And a lot of you guys are messaging and chiming in. And thank you very much for doing that. Um, asking how the hell do we sit up here and how do we do it? How do we get ourselves to where we can actually, for real, no doubt about it, um, go through and get out of the situation? And I want to just say one thing, and we're going to go to a quick break. I want you guys to grab your snack. I want you to guys come on back, and then we're going to get into number one. Um, number one um, is really good, and it's something that I think that you guys need to really understand as Americans is that when you want a life change, have a life change. But we're going to get into that, you guys. The first one we're talking about is lifestyle updating and choosing the lifestyle that you want to live when you decide to do this. We're getting into that. But I want you guys to go ahead out there. I want you to take some time. Um, I'm going to refill my coffee, get it warmed up here. And then so you guys grab a snack and come right on back, you guys. We're going to get into this. It's going to be really, really nice. Let's Having a, a good time, people. You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson. Go grab a snack and come Come on back. Hey, you guys, Cream Jackson, you were live on the set. I've got some news to tell you. Ten years ago, I left California, USA on the beach, and I got on a plane. I went to the tropics, and I reinvented myself. I wanted to turn my dreams into reality. I had a great time, great friend. I published magazines, books. I meditated. I sipped coconuts, you guys. I had tattoo competition, weekly shows, and I want you guys to know I sat down, and I wanted to write step by step how I did it. How did I get free? How did I outsource everything? How did I get to where I could run my company from my laptop? And now I finished it. It is done. My new book, you guys, Outsource Everything, is out now. I finished it. I'm telling you all about how I gained my freedom, how I live in the tropics next to the beach in a beautiful lifestyle that I still run my business. I outsource everything. My new ebook, it's out now, you guys. It's available right now, you guys. I made it to where freedom is here for you. You can get the same freedom that I did. It's totally possible and it's totally doable. And this has never been been a better time than to do it. Grab my new ebook, Outsource Everything, on Google Play and the App Store, you guys. And of course, creamantonio.com forward slash my ebook. Outsource Everything. Outsource Everything, How to Be a Minimalist CEO by Kareem Jackson. An introduction for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Presented by k and America and the Chunks and Group. to break free. Hey, you guys, Krim Jackson, you are live on the set, and I'm going to take you around the world with me in my dream as a minimalist CEO. Turning my clients' dreams into reality is what I do, showing that success is truly, truly for everyone. Hey, you guys, I've got new shows weekly. Stay tuned and live your best life. Best life. Best life. Three, two, one, we are live. Hello, world! Success is for everyone, baby! You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson! Yes! Let's go!
Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back. I'm glad that you guys are here. If you're just chiming in, we're talking about quitting your job, outsourcing your business, and leaving the country and surviving. That's what we're getting into today. That's the topic. That's the subject, you guys. I'm crazy, crazy glad that you guys are here. Um, and I'm really loving all the comments and everything, you guys. I'm really glad. Thank you, LinkedIn, for chiming in. Thanks, you guys, for always being phenomenal, always being supportive. Share this out there, you guys. We're getting ready to get into this right now, you guys, because I want you guys to understand something is that if you're on if in a business first of all this is not a crisis situation you need to be thinking global anyway you know you need a website now you know you need to be out there now right you know that right so what needs to happen is you need to take that education that insight and then really take control and be proactive and not reactive that's probably going to be what's going to change your paradigm what's going to make it to where it's something for you that is not a big deal the first one here you guys number one you guys i want to get into so we can get through this really quick tonight or so or the daytime if you're in the morning i want you guys to have a great friday out there i want you guys in america us this is your friday i wanted to do this in the morning so that you guys can see like yeah so when you leave with this the weekend okay if you're thinking about this and you guys know who you are you're chiming in if you say i see this on replay or the other are the the highlights i want you to understand is that you don't have to choose you can leave, you can figure it out, you can reinvent yourself, you can go global. And right now we know that we need to be global to survive. We need to have multiple, multiple revenue streams, multiple demographics for our businesses. That's why it says on here, specifically how I quit my job because I was waiting tables part-time during the recession. I outsourced my business that wasn't making no damn money. So I had to outsource everything and get that figured out. I left the country and then you know what? I survived. And number one right here, you guys, boom, boom, boom. Um, what lifestyle do you want? That's your first situation. The first thing that you need to figure out for yourself is what is the lifestyle that you are going to have? You, that is a very important key to you that you need to think about. Because one, if you're having issues right now, you're frustrated, apparently the lifestyle that you have, whatever that is, isn't working right now. It's not working. And you need to really sit up and figure out, I need to change my life. I need to change the things that I do. I need to change the way that I am. Understand, again, I'm going to say it to you, like I said before, this, this, we got into this. Is it that American passport thing that you have or you don't have? You need to get one if you don't have a passport. But that American passport, um, that's your American born right. That is your American born right is to have a passport. So when it comes to lifestyle, and what I mean is this. For me personally, I'll be very honest. I saw Eat, Pray, Love, y'all. <laughs> Eat, Pray, Love changed my life. Um, I watched it because the, the 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 publisher, the black beautiful girl who's huge right now, the black actress. I, I watched for her, but then. I just fell in love with the movie. I, uh, even though it's, it's a girly movie, it's very sappy, but she's a writer just like me. She, she had a big deal on the table just like me. Um, people thought that she was in the, the top of her game. She had a relationship that, that was okay on the surface, just like I had had at that time, but she wasn't happy. She was totally frustrated and she didn't know what to do. So she decided to take a leap of faith and just go travel the world and end up being, of course, in Bali, along with Italy and other places like that. And she meditated yoga, did the whole, that whole Zen thing and found herself, found new love. And then of course came back and everything ended up, you know, you know, happy ending. Right. But I really woke me up to a situation where I saw this is real. Folks are doing this. And again, y'all as a black male, it wasn't no black folks doing it. If you watch the movie, the black sister, nothing against her, her personally, but her role, who was very, a very supportive friend but she thought she was crazy. And that's what I was dealing with in my personal life. I really wasn't happy. I couldn't explain it. On the outside, people thought that I was already successful. I reached my, my, pit, my, my pinnacle that they thought. We had gotten all the clients. Everything that we created had come to fruition. We had manifested this from my living room, the business we had at that time, which is still the business right now, Canco America. We're celebrating 20 years right now. So I wasn't happy with the situation. I didn't like how it felt. I didn't like everyone that was involved with me. I didn't like where it was going. There were so many things and the recession hit. And Lord Jesus, oh man, if you're out there, you guys, you're watching this, God does things in mysterious ways, people. Okay, I'm just saying to you, God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes the things that are happening to you is divine intervention. I'm just telling you, I literally, 
saw that everyone was going bankrupt in America at the time. I didn't go bankrupt. I didn't file bankruptcy. I didn't do that. But so many were. So many folks' credit was ruined. So many folks were leaving their homes or being evicted or whatever. So many people were walking cars. It was crazy. If you guys remember in, in 2008, after recession, and mind you, I'm talking to a friend of mine, um, big shout out to you, Marcus Bussey. America still, many have not bounced back yet. They think they've bounced back. <laughs> but until COVID hit and Americans and the rest of the world, but specifically Americans, we were forced to sit on our butts for a couple months. Most people, there's rooms in their homes they never saw. There's crap in the garage that, that they'd spent money on, had the tags on them. They never really had thought about it. Most of them had never been with their families for dinner in years. Do you know I hadn't had a family dinner with my father and everyone at the table ever in my life? He was working, making the money, doing it, right? Bringing home the bag. But to sit at a table, everyone's there at the same time, talking about the day, that was literally fifth grade for me. But you don't notice it until you sit in your black ass, the white ass over at the table. Now you're like, well, damn, I, I forgot we have napkins. We have silverware. You know, we haven't cooked at home forever. Oh, my God. Remember, there was no delivery for a little while. Folks was cooking. Folks were going to the store, getting toilet paper and getting food and cooking. And then when they figured out the health issues, big deal. So you guys, one thing I want to say here for you, number one, is make sure that you guys, that you think about your lifestyle. The opportunity for you when you want to quit and reinvent yourself and leave the country is that you can really say, you know what? Just like E Pray Love, I want to see how I didn't know how people were happy without Burberry, without Bling. I'm thinking, how did know I didn't know how you were happy without the Escalade, without the the, the limousines to the parties. I didn't know. I spent literally days at lunch at Houston's. Capitol Grill, Hereford House, shout out to you family in Kansas City, you know, Gates Barbecue. I literally, every day after, after work, we'd go for cocktails and martinis somewhere. You know what I'm saying, people. You know what I'm talking about. You just didn't want to go home yet. You know what I'm saying? Or either you really need to network. You need to go to this chamber thing. You need to go to this place and meet this person. You need to go do this event. You really didn't think about it. And so when you leave that, the opportunity is for you to be able to change your entire life because the things that you don't really need, and now with COVID and Corona, a lot of y'all, 40 million. If you watching this again and you rich and you're doing your thing and because you know you everybody's saying they're doing so perfect, y'all. You look online, everybody is fabulous. Then nobody need no stimulus check. If you look on Facebook, if you look on LinkedIn, ain't nobody skipped a beat if you look on LinkedIn, y'all. I know that's all BS. I look at the numbers and if you do or are you do, you are doing okay, you know damn well you blessed because you know another 10 people who ain't. You can't drive home and see folks in lines for food and not think something's going on. Something's real. We've getting bombarded with people that need websites because they've never had it and there's no walk-ins. Right now, people need to be digital. We have a digital ebook program right now that is blowing up. Just 10 spots left, y'all. 10 spots left, y'all, in the ebook promo for the whole year. Just FYI. But blowing up because now they know who's going to Barnes and Noble. And Kindle and all that's great. But in the, the day, who you need your own. And not just crisis. The opportunity is that people are at home, students are at home. If you're a teacher, Jesus Christ, you need an ebook series because people are trying to get educated. They need tutorials. And I don't mean this in America. I mean all the world is home right now. So first of all, you guys, number one, you guys, I'm, I'm gonna go through these real quick. I, I Change your lifestyle. Take the opportunity to sell all that Burberry, all that bling bling, change it. Please go watch Eat, Pray, Love. I'm serious, you guys think I'm corny. I know it's a chick flick, <laughs> but go watch it with an open mind. Today's Friday, y'all. Go get the movie. I don't know if it's on Netflix or whatever. Get it. it used to be on DVD. It used to go to McDonald's and get it from the Netflix at the McDonald's machine. So maybe it is on Netflix. Yeah, because I think I got it from McDonald's back in the day. Of the, 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 they had the vending machines. <laughs> so go check that movie out. 
Don't watch it for entertainment value. Watch it for educational value. Look behind the actors because they really went to Bali. They really went to Italy. And I don't mean Bali. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's a gaming company. Bali. They really went to Bali. Okay. Not Bali gaming. They didn't go to Las Vegas. But understand this, you guys. Look at the back because that's what I saw. I really saw like, get the hell out of here. And when I went and said, I need to figure this out. I put my whole life into two big suitcases. I had my suits and stuff. Though. I had suits and tuxedos in there too. Now I had shoes. I was cute. I didn't leave everything. I was had to, I had to build a business, but I also had linen. I also took up yoga and meditation and I was already into that, but I really could focus on it. I lost everything, right? <laughs> nothing was holding me back. No lease, no cars, nothing. I had lost literally or turned everything in to reinvent myself. And I say that to you because sometimes you, when you change your life to a more simple situation, your brain changes. It changes your whole brain. It really does. So the first thing you guys really think about that lifestyle that you want to live. Think about that. So take the time to go out there, y'all, and change your lifestyle and decide what lifestyle is it that you really want. Don't play games with me. What lifestyle is it that you really, 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 really want? Okay, I'm just saying that, putting that out there, you guys. Think about that lifestyle that you want, because I'm going to tell you this, and I think a lot of folks, which I like now, a lot of folks right now, one thing I do like is that because of COVID, and this is everywhere in the world, y'all. We're not in this. This is not like American recession again. This is a world, a global recession. A lot of people have realized now that they don't need all that crap. It's, it's a lot of folks have realized that. A lot of folks are seeing right now that, oh, damn, you know, I really don't need all that stuff. I really don't need this. I really don't need that. I really, you know, every, I'm gonna tell you this. My friends that work at T-Mobile, T-Mobile, I talk about them all the time. They made the most money ever in history. This, this COVID, you know, 20, what, 2019, 2020, you know, and these folks, the T-Mobile, which is now was, you know, bought out Sprint, right? In my hometown, Kansas City, um, Overland Park, Kansas. They're not going back to the office, y'all. Not full time, not seven days, five days, whatever hell a week. They working from home. They have changed their entire business model. And the world is taking suit. It's never going to be back to new normal. Or to, it's never going to be back to the, to the old normal. It's going to be a new normal. And mind you, the opportunity for black folks, minorities, this new normal can be an awesome thing for you. So once you guys figure out that your lifestyle that you want to lead, then really go through and really take the time. And it may seem silly to you, but remember as an American, y'all, European, the world is your oyster. Go out there and really say, well, where I want to go? What destination do I want to go through? And research these destinations, people. Don't play games. Don't play games with people with this. This is a serious situation. This is a serious opportunity, but really go out there and think, where do I want to go? And not from the tourist mindset. Take your time and make sure that you go through and you say, okay, you know, I want to do this. It's a great situation. But in the day, um, I also want to, to be able to change the life and live the life that I want to live. So keep that in mind. So uh, let, me, let me say it another way to you when it comes to your destinations, right? You may not be able to believe this. You may be shocked about this. But if you could imagine um, and believe that there, are black, th there is Black American privilege, like white privilege, there's Black American privilege around the world. If you ever want to see how white folks feel in America, when you're complaining about the diversity and inclusion and all that crap and how they are treated differently and they can do this and that and da, 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 da. one, if that's how you feel, if that's how they treat you, if that was someone's home, you wouldn't be begging to stay at their house. If it was your own home, you wouldn't be there all the damn time. So treat America the same way. So we're looking for a destination. There's black, black privilege around the world, black American privilege. Um, I call it racism free destinations, you guys. Um, I, racism free living, actually. Um, because for us, being judged on our own merits is a privilege. Um, and, it, and, and the only edge that we usually need. I don't mean black American privilege in the way that we look down at people, because one thing about black Americans the world likes. We don't look down on people. 
We don't treat people differently. We are not arrogant. We know where we came from. We were slaves and the world knows where we came from. So there's an inherent respect that you get around the world that you don't get, that's normal. It's like privilege to us because we're not used to it, but it's normal around the world. So when you pick your destination, I would really say, don't go to Europe, don't go to UK, leave, go all the way, go Ghana, go to Asia, go to the Philippines islands and all that. And let me put this up here to you guys. Another thing, number three, you guys, I'm gonna bring this up because I think it's worth in the same section. One thing that helped me <laughs> choose where the fuck I was going was the dollar conversion rate. Oh my God, okay, let me break this down, y'all. Okay, analyze the dollar conversion rate, you guys. I get asked a lot, what is that? What is the dollar conversion rate? Especially for folks that don't really know, or you know it a little bit, because you know you bought some graphics design on Fiverr or something like that, or from abroad, or you have an admin. But I get asked a lot, what is that? What's the dollar conversion? Let me explain, because no one freaking helped me when I was doing it. And if you are black in America and you're remotely successful, you can survive anywhere on this earth. OK, keep that in mind. You are preconditioned bread to overachieve, do a lot with a little and put yourself up by your bootstraps. All those things you're brave to be. But we're never given the boots, right? Oh, yeah. Pull up your boots by your bootstrap, but you ain't got no boots. You went around barefooted. This is the invisible advantage that they never saw developing in us. And I mean that, you know, I talk about this a lot, y'all. What I'm saying about Black American privilege and how things are around the world, you guys understand this. This is another blessing. And I'm saying this before y'all, don't get mad at me, y'all. But the blessing for Black Americans in slavery that I see about all the Blacks around that didn't have the slavery that we had. I mean, the Aborigines in Australia. I mean, the Itis in the Philippines. I mean, even the UK. Black Americans, that whole slavery, racism, that uh, that whole that whole Jim Crow era, all of that. What that did was it bred us to overachieve. It bred us to do more with less or nothing. We had to pay off and buy our wives and husbands and children from the slave masters back in the day, right? Just to get free. You know, if you was a free nigga, you know, that means you paid, you got free somehow. And we had to pay. It wasn't like it was, you, you, you came from nothing. Then when you left, you had nothing. That inbred into our psyche, into our culture, an amazing amount of ambition and know-how and successful innateness that you don't really appreciate unless you leave the country. And you realize that as a Black American, if you work at a McDonald's as a, as a shift leader, you can survive anywhere on this earth. Because if you don't have racism, discrimination, and all of those things, and mind you, even a public school American education, if you're around the world, is top. So dollar conversion rates, you guys, and research your destination. As I said before, 1,000 US dollars is equivalent to 45,000 to 100,000 and sometimes more on the other side of the world. That's why you hear about all these companies outsourcing to Asia, big companies. That's why you hear Donald Trump getting his ties done in China, why you hear the MAGA hats are made in China. My cup is Chinese too. That's why. But we don't realize what that means. We know what it means a little bit. We're learning a little bit. But what that means is that for $500 a month, maybe you can have a branch of your salon in Asia, the Philippines islands, definitely in Ghana, maybe. But understand, it may not be big and fabulous, but we brothers, we don't need big and fabulous. We black folks, that's not our world. When they go abroad, they usually go abroad to have more. They take advantage of the situation. We don't. We just want to enjoy our life and, and thrive and, and be happy and, and contribute to the community. So, and mind you, in America, usually we don't have that much. So if you have a little shop, a little salon, a little whatever, you probably $500 a month, definitely $1,000 a month. You could have you a boutique salon, you know, in the hood in Africa in Asia, in the Philippines islands, you guys. You didn't know that, did you? And that's because of the dollar conversion rate. Maybe you only have one stylist. Maybe it's not even open all the time. Maybe it's only two chairs in there, but your brand is now global. That's how they do it. Paris Hilton got a fabulous man-made beach resort, living condos. It's a condo, it ain't even a resort, but it's a condo thing in Manila, in the middle of the, the city. A man-made beach, like sand and waves and every damn thing. 
in the city. We ain't got that. That dollar conversion rate changes the game, you guys, because you can do things you couldn't imagine doing. And then when you don't have racism holding you back, all other opportunities open up for you. You know, and there's black American privilege. So now instead of just cutting heads at the barbershop, maybe your barbershop abroad that you only go there twice a year during vacations, during the wintertime, you go to the tropics with there at summertime. There you're able to have clients that are making money. But there your client, your your shop maybe is very popular. Maybe you have a product that you you get made there, you have it sent to the to America and you sell it in America. However, you do it, understand what you're paying for those Gucci's and whatever that apartment showing off in the States, diversify that life and take advantage of this right here. Research where you want to go. And then part of that research, I think, is the same thing. Analyze the current situation, analyze that conversion rate. And I'm gonna play this, y'all. Um I, I'm going to play this for a little bit. I, I want you to see this because this is a reason, um, one of the reasons um, why I chose the Philippines Islands. Um, and a lot of you, this is an old clip that we did in one of my old shows, and I had them give me this to me um, so I could actually play it for you today. And then we're going to get to number three, you guys. Um, I mean, number four, um, which is shed your shit, y'all. Um, but I want you to see this. And the reason I want you to see this um, is because I want you to see how folks abroad see us. I want you to see how someone abroad, a president, okay, sees what we go through as black Americans in America and in Europe as well. But mainly he's talking about black America. Um, the person that questioned him, <laughs> I think he may have been European and he won't ask that damn question again, I'll tell you that much. But you guys understand this. Is it... I, I want you to really see and understand that when it comes down to it, we're only niggas in America. The only place where nigga means something negative is in America. Well, maybe Europe as well. And then maybe some parts of China. Like, I'm sorry, China. Y'all got some racist folks in China. I got to be honest. But understand this, you guys. I want you to see this real quick. Um, uh, I, I think that this is something that shocked me back in the day. And it was one of the reasons um, I think that folks always think for black folks um, and minorities, we don't choose where we go because of just the weather or just the this or the that. We know we the racism thing, that's always an issue. But I swear to you, we're only niggas in America. No one else in the world, as you saw from the Black Lives Matter protests, see us that way. They see us for who we really are which is beautiful, wonderful, a talented people, ambitious people. But check this out, you guys. Um, I want you to see this. Check this out. I'm going to be here watching with you, but check this out. It happens in America. They're shooting the blacks there. It shows on TV. It shows on TV. What's the difference between America and the Philippines? Nothing. So what is surprising here is surprising to us. We see policemen, they're shooting a black guy there. How many times had it happened in the past? That's why you have the, demos, the, the violent demonstration. So, would it surprise you and me? Almost the same. One case only, three cases. So what? It involves the same principle. Say for every one black there dead, you have about five here. And so, does it make uh, this world more livable because there is less killing? The, when you shoot a black there, dead, what is that? Is that not appalling? When you bomb Syria and Iraq and you kill communities and you kill children and old people and hospital, what is it? And why is it that United States is not doing anything? I do not read anybody in that stupid body complaining about the stench there of death. You cannot discount it. But what do you think what the Americans did to the black people there? Is that not rubbing out also? I say, well, it was just uh, one community there, one state of America. <laughs> well, but you have there about 10. He got me, yo. I was shocked. And at that time, I was already here. 
I was always invited by President Aquino's administration to do a Philippines Magazine International to help them market and rebrand their country in the Philippines, which was shocking to me. I know in America, they wouldn't ask a black person to market for Chicago. So I was shocked. Um, Duterte has a lot of Contra, you know, a lot of drama, a lot of issues or whatever. Um, but when that happened, and mind you, my radio show, my TV show, my partners, they're with Malachi Young Palace. So I have been on their radio shows and their TV stations and things like that as well. Um, so I was in that circle. But when I was there and I saw that and well, heard that, and I didn't play the first part because I didn't want to embarrass the network. I spoke on the president at Kino. But what had happened was a white... Um, I think it was a CNN reporter, a white guy who was um, he had like a like a like an accent, but he asked what well, he threw into the president's face about the the drug judicial killings that they were doing. You know, they killed drug drug addicts here um, and they were like like they were assassinating the, the, the drug lords and the drug addicts. And, and, and just like, you know, you need to get clean or you need to you're going to die. So it was a very nice killed. Mind you. This is years ago, okay? This is a few years back. You've had 1,600, I think, shootings since then. He was only talking about what he had seen at that time. This is when, this is when Obama was in office when, he's when he said this. To so understand that what I saw was I had never heard and now we've seen Black Lives Matter protests globally. We've seen all that. I'd never heard a president take up for Black Americans. So he told he he was yelling and he in his English, but he was yelling and he's got cuss words. It, there's more. It goes on. He was pretty much saying, "What the hell? Fuck you! What are you talking about? How dare you come into here asking me about my judicial killings, about my drug? Now, mind you, they're only killing drug addicts. They're not killing brown skin Filipinos or or I the Filipinos, which are the black one, Filipinos. They're not that's not what it is. So what he was saying was we have a drug issue and they're and it's killing my my people. So we're gonna fix this. It wasn't targeted at black people or white people. If you was doing drugs and you were doing that, you you better watch out. And they killed a lot. And they've since stopped. And the country is 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 is, is uh, there's some, it fixed some things to be critical. But my point is, he called that CNN reporter out like, "How dare you come in here and criticize me for what I'm doing?" When you're sitting here, we watch the news, we see how you're slaughtering and killing black folks. And mind you, this was not none of these. George Floyd hadn't happened yet. None of those things. So already you would saw the white American credibility deteriorating around the world they had no right to call anyone out they couldn't and the and mind you the after this conversation the reporter sat his ass down and that's why i chose that was important to me it really shocked me and at that time i'd already received the great treatment from the previous president but then when i when now trump was going to be elected and these things were happening and then this happened and i said i'm, I'm gonna stay a little longer y'all i'm not going back yet Mm -mm. I'm not going back yet. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this stuff. And that's where it came for me. So when you're choosing your place and you get the whole um, European, um, you get the whole dollar conversion rate or whatever the conversion rate is for yourself, understand that for black folks, we choose things a little bit differently. So I wanted to make sure that I put that out there and I showed you guys that because I do understand that we don't choose things for the same reason everyone else does. So just want to put that out there for you. Um, God bless you for that. Um, and if you guys had been there, every Filipino in the room knew what he was talking about. And now you see the the, the marketing campaign the Philippines Magazine is doing for the whole amnesty, Black American amnesty thing, whatever. Great situation. So I'm plugging the Philippines islands. But the next one, you guys, number four, you guys, um, and I'm going to go really fast. I'm taking too long for this. Number four, you guys, you got to shed your shit. OK, you got to go ahead. This is a secret. What white global entrepreneurs know about um, executives know about this. White folks do this all the time. You guys, investors and OFWs don't tell us about they don't tell black folks about this. They call it minimalism. They call it simplicity. They call it downsizing. They call it all kinds of things. But in the day, they're just shedding all they shit and streamlining their life and their companies. So keep that in mind, you guys. I, um, and it saved my business, too, by the way. 
I'm getting rid of all my crap, saved my business, and allowed me to live the dream lifestyle as a minimalist CEO, which I had no idea what that really even meant. Um, it's also saved big companies like Western Union, AT&T, um, Citibank, and remember Kenny Rogers Roasters? This saved them too. Um, so understand, you guys, get rid of all your stuff. You know, understand that that stuff is keeping you to be a slave to the situation. It's hard for you to go ahead and to really grow and to become what you want to become if you have all of this stuff. And remember, it's not about having the stuff and being broke. It's about the fact that you think that you need all this stuff. The same with your company. You should be outsourcing, delegating, doing stuff. There's just certain things. You don't need all these offices, maybe. You don't need these all these parking spots, maybe. You don't need all this stuff. You can outsource everything. And in the United States, most of the time when you outsource things, whether it's to Kinko's or printing or subcontractors or anything like that, it's 100% tax deductible. And if you outsource your, your printing or you rent your printers, it's deductible, not depreciating the bowl and things like that. So keep that in mind, you guys. Shut all your stuff. Get that out of there. Let everyone know that in the day, you're very serious about this and you're trying to get rid of everything. Go out there, grab all your crap, throw it up in the front of the house and go ahead and get out of that rat race you're in. And you're going to have to shut everything. And you, and you see this picture, you see this graphic they got on the screen for you. Look at all the things. And you guys, every American knows this. Y'all know what we do. Y'all know what it is. And you know dang well that in the, the day, there is no reason, no reason to sit up and to have all this stuff. So I just want to put that out there for you too and understand. I've got a big thing. I'll put a link in the link below. I've got a really popular video I did when I first came to the Philippines Islands, literally called Shed Your Shit where I really go into how I shed everything and how I felt amazing. I'd never slept so well. I'd never, you know, I remember you, we have a lot of crap. You're cleaning, you're organizing, you have them wash all this stuff. You got to go through it. You know, you have so much stuff that you don't need that has nothing to do with you, nothing to do with your life. And it's wasted money. It's your kid's inheritance sitting there in a box in a garage or whatever. You could have gave that money to your kids grandkids, whatever. You could have paid off a credit card or not had a credit card debt in the first place. A lot of you put this up on credit card. The next one you guys I want to get into and really show you real quick is that you need to go and figure out exactly what you want to do. Business, job, hiatus. But for me, you guys, it was all of the above. It's hard to see the great American education, the value of it in America. But you see it. Even just a U.S. high school graduating high school education when you go abroad is really, really superior. If you don't know this, you guys, I'm going to give you another caveat that you may not understand too, is that when it comes down to it, did you know that in, you, and if you go to abroad, working at a McDonald's or a Kentucky Fried Chicken in a fast food restaurant is a, is a not prestigious, but it's a good job, a respected job. You can raise your family working in McDonald's. I ain't talking about the general manager. I'm talking about the frontline cook, the cashier. Lord, if you make it to a shift leader, you can, I mean, you've got a wife at home who doesn't work. Maybe she's selling things online. You got a kid or two at home and a damn dog working in McDonald's. So just understand that in the States, it doesn't mean anything. But if you're on that level, if you can, if you remember, it's the same company which I'm just trying to say is if you do go abroad and it, whether it's whether it's going to be business, a job or hiatus or all the above, when you do go above and you go abroad, how I did it and how I saw it was that I really saw that the worst case scenario, I can survive because I was willing to shed all my crap and I was willing to live like they live because I saw that they don't even make $500 a month, but they happy though. No racism, ain't no cops shooting them. So I knew that if I'm a, I'm a black American, I can, we, we can think up some stuff. We can make things happen, whether it's a party planning, whether it's a, a party night, events, makeup, hair, or a job. You know, you can work, get a job too. That wasn't what I wanted to do, but I knew that the worst case scenario, I had to live with that like they live, go to live, be ready to live in the community. Be ready to live in the same place. I want to see what apartment you got. 
because your apartment is hundred dollars a month. I want to go see what you, where you living at, you know, and which is what I did. <laughs> Eventually, I had an apartment that cost me a hundred dollars a month when I first came to the Philippines Islands. Not the very first time, because first I was kind of bougie, and then I got jealous and started realizing with my friends and people that I knew, like my drivers, I'm thinking, you, you, you mean you're paying a hundred dollars a month for your house? With your wife and your kids, where, where, and I know you. You're not. Nothing's wrong with you. You're a professional person. You're nice. It's just that we don't think about it. And mind you, even though the conversion rate, we think about it. They think about it as a big dollars. I saw it as brain power. So for a hundred dollars a month of my brain power, my rent is done. Now I can go to yoga. Now I can figure out. I can grow my hair out. Get dreads. I can grow my beard now. You don't mean so much. To, I'm not going to be a slave to that situation anymore. It just changed the way that I saw everything. So you guys just understand, really decide out there whether you want to do business, you want to do a job, whatever you want to do, um, decide that, figure that out and understand at the end of the day, it's a real big situation. It's a really big question for you that you need to go ahead and answer. And that's a very good thing for you to have, because let me tell you this. Let me say this before I go we'll move on to the next one here. Um, let me let me just say this to you. Let me get back here where I can see y'all pretty people. Um, before I move on here, a lot of times as black and minority folks, we only travel for vacation. And hopefully we get a two week vacation every year. We come back and we're broke. Whether you have a business or you're an employee, it doesn't matter. Or you use a credit card, you're paying a credit card bill. That's not how white folks travel, y'all. You see this the graphic, you saw the graphic. That's not what they do. Because remember, they can go on vacations all the time, weekend trips and things like that. They go and looking for opportunity. They go realizing that, so if I have $5,000, that can be as much as a quarter million to a half a million abroad. That's a house. That's a rental property. So maybe a lot of them, which I'm getting into this year too, and I have another video coming up about how I flipped a house in the Philippines. That money can flip a house. Maybe you can't own the house because you're a foreigner, but you can invest in the flip, no different than the states, and you can show people and locally how to flip a house. Maybe that money would open a salon in that country where you could have a Philippine partner who's your who's a stylist and you're in abroad and you're just going back and forth, but you're now a stylist abroad as well. Yet yeah, there it, it changes the game. I know so many non-black people that are abroad, they have canteens and restaurants and clubs and bars and resorts and hotels and boutique hotels, companies, call centers, BPOs. More of us need to understand is that we need to come and do simple businesses or support existing businesses because black folks, we got money, we got stuff. We just don't really know that it goes so far. So you wonder why we always wonder well, why can the white dudes wear khakis and, and flip flops and then we got to wear Gucci's and da, 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 da. we don't have to. In America, maybe you think that you have to because you're working for the man. But eventually, when you understand and you get through it and you realize what, when you travel, travel for business, travel to get a hiatus. Don't travel just because you want a vacation and you want to blow all this money because you are so pent up and da, 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 da. We had COVID, y'all relaxed, travel and look for business opportunity. I have another video you guys can search on my YouTube channel or my website about how I had a few black guys that came on my show about how they shot their music videos in the Philippines for $1,000, $2,000. Yeah, great video also, you guys. Um, The next one you guys I wanna get into real quick and then you guys understand this too, is that when it comes down to it, we, and black folks, we know this one. If you're a small business person, you know this one, the master, the skill, you guys, you master the skill of networking and connections. Okay, you guys, let me give me a little caveat. You know how to, we know how to bootstrap. Many around the world, they don't know how to do it. You, you okay, you, you understand that? That's an American thing. In America, we also have lots of successful people who turn around and, and educate the masses. The American ideal, okay, is starting from zero to hero abroad. They think it takes money to make money. Yeah, you may not think about that, but you guys understand that right now, the truth of it is, is that the one thing that America, that if you're black American minority small business, the one thing that America has is the robust small 
business entrepreneur, mom and pop industry, which are making more money than most families around the world. That ideal that we know how to start something with nothing is a very American ideal, not even UK. A lot of UK minorities, black folks work for somebody. But in America, since we were slaves and we couldn't work anywhere, then they discriminated. We couldn't get drinking from the drinking fountain. We couldn't ride the damn bus. All that crap they did, the backfire, is that we learned how to make something from nothing, which ends up being your number one skill. My father went to Africa when I was a kid. He had, a, he had, a, he had luggage. He took his hammers and his saw back in the day and his luggage. He went over there and he built a life. He went there for a wedding, by the way. Uh, my stepmother, Linda, um, how, shout out to you, Linda. Um, her, her friend, I can't think of from where, maybe from her high school friend, got married to a Nigerian um, and they went there for the wedding. Yeah, he became a multimillionaire there. And all he had was a saw, a drill, his, his construction equipment, and he ended up building a whole life, afforded me to go to private school from going for a wedding. And it wasn't easy in the beginning. They were put in jail. They had some drama, you know, da, 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 you guys. And my dad, my great father, okay, I have a great dad. He showed me that was possible. But you couldn't do that in America. You know, you're just trying to get you a good job and to, be, to, to survive a, a police stop. Whereas he raised me in there, private school, everything, mansions, servants, maid, butlers, drivers. He shipped over all of our cars. You know, he was really balling <laughs> from going there for a wedding. Because if you are black American, y'all, you can survive anywhere. And the way that we do it is because we know, we have mastered the skill of networking and making connections. We know how to go and meet people. And we're very, 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 very humble. You don't really know how humble black folks are unless you leave the country because around the world, if we see somebody talking crap on a Filipino, we, we ain't gonna walk by. You, you, you brothers, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we not walking by. If I see, which I've seen sometimes, you know, um, Australians sometimes, or sometimes some Europeans maybe, you know, bullying or criticizing or yelling because they're big and Filipinos are small at Filipinos. Oh, I'm the first one to walk over. That attribute is how we're very good at networking, how we've mastered it. Because in the day, we would usually, we know all these people. The same as in the States, black folks, Mexicans, Filipinos, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, we all in the same kind of area. We all party together, right? We're all friends. So when we go abroad, blacks, which you know this if you're any diversity or inclusion coach, blacks, we are really, 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 really good at working with everybody. And when you leave and you go global, it don't change. Your networking skills can get you into, remember there's no racism. There's no discrimination, diversity, inclusion. The only issue you have is you're not a citizen. So maybe you can't own this or own that, but neither can the white dudes. So that's why it's a level playing field. And usually you can, you're really good at networking. So the people that are around you are very trustworthy. They're genuine. They're not, they're not your friend because you got money or because they see you as money. Not really. Most of them see you as cool, innovative, you know, inspiring. They don't really see the money. Whereas the disadvantage for the other counterparts is that they usually are just money. That's it. Or leverage. You know, they got to pay to play. Whereas us, and I know many blacks abroad, we, if we, we broke, we down and out, we got local Filipino friends that are, they be like, well, I got them. I got a little money. I can pay for the drinks tonight. It's like that. You know, we've never experienced that before. That's what I call Black American privilege. So anyway, the networking thing is really, really great. Um, and you guys take advantage of that and understand globally, everyone doesn't have that skill. Everyone can't do it. Some people are very shy. They're not well connected. They can't connect with people. They also have classes issues and color roses. And they have their own issues too. But we ain't got none of that. And remember, if you can survive in America, you can survive anywhere. And it's mainly because we've mastered the key of networking, y'all. We're good at that one. The next one, you guys, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say it again to y'all. Do not do this. Do, go get your damn passport. 
buy your passport and a round trip ticket. Go do it. Just get it going, y'all. Please, please, please. Yes, I said it. Skills underappreciated in the USA are premium abroad. FUBU in Asia is like Gucci in America, and it costs the same for some damn FUBU as a Gucci pair of shoes. The FUBU stores are gorgeous, and they're, they're in the top malls. Dave Chappelle sold out in the Philippines. Did you guys know that? Who's, Dave Chappelle is married to a Filipina, by the way, and he reinvented himself in Africa. Did you ever ask why? Do y'all ever ask what the hell? I mean, everybody said the nigga was crazy. He don't know what he's doing, what's going on. But you know what? We black folks, we know that nigga. He ain't crazy. He was sick of it. So understand, get your passport. It is your American right. That's what your grandparents fought for, your passport. Go get a round trip ticket. You don't already figure the destination out. Go get a round trip ticket. Make this thing happen. Take your business, figure it out what you're going to do. Just start networking, start figuring out what you want to do, because at the end of the day, this is what they do. And it's easier for us. Believe me, it's easier for us than it is for them. No matter what money you have, we, we don't, we used to doing something with nothing. So if you go here and your little $5 or your little dollar in your pocket is worth 50 or a hundred, black folks have never experienced that emotion. What you got is worth more than it is. Usually because of discrimination, what happens? What you have is worth less. I don't mean worthless, worth less than what it really is. So when you all of a sudden get into a situation where what you know, what you have, no matter what it is, I don't care if you're a teacher, I don't care if you work at McDonald's in America, I don't care what you're doing. When you go and you all of a sudden you get off the plane and that black privilege kicks the fuck in, and what you got is worth more, it will change your life. Go back and forth, that round trip ticket I said, you ain't gonna make it a life, but just see how it is and invest. Maybe you just doing little simple stuff in, in the US, working your job, doing your thing and investing in something abroad. Got friends or you know whatever it might be, but it's the same thing they're doing because when I got off the plane here, y'all, I was actually upset that they didn't tell more black folks and small business folks and minorities and women entrepreneurs about the opportunities here. You see me struggling with my printing costs in America, but you didn't tell me I could save 80%. What the hell? I'm black entrepreneur of the year. And no one told me, the Minority Supplier Council, you didn't tell me that I could save 50% off my labor cost if I just outsource these things? Not interns, paying people, professional, college degree, educated people with my little waiting table salary. You didn't tell me that? But you tell the other people. I, I, I didn't get it. And that's why I tell you guys, and I'm going to move to the next one here, y'all. I tell you guys that at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, um, get, wait, 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 get your passport, get your round trip ticket, okay? Don't be playing around. Stop playing games with that. Just get your passport, get your round trip ticket, you know, get out there, go experience some stuff. Um, really understand that this is your right as an American. It's not a big deal. Um, but I will say this to you, is I was pissed off that they didn't tell me. I was upset that I got off the plane and there's no diversity and inclusion in America and business. I get the whole diversity and inclusion situation they have for employees. I appreciate that. But I have a double edged emotion about that. I really feel that, no, if y'all don't want black folks and women to work for you in diversity and inclusion, your corporations, then uh, more black folks open your business even your side business, get your high side hustle. Because if you go diversify, you're global now, all of a sudden, when you don't have any issues around you, the game changes, it changes. The next one, you guys understand this too, number, um, number eight here, you guys really go out there, launch your damn website and boost, get paid ads, paid, 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 even if it's $5 on social media and you ain't got to be barking in your own neighborhood either okay success is not material wealth abroad no one thinks money makes you happy nobody but americans think that crap 
And blacks are not limited to being a basketball player, a celebrity, or a rapper. Blacks abroad are teachers, professors, entrepreneurs, diplomats, and no one assumes we are only good at entertainment. Honestly, they think we're good at every damn thing, okay? <laughs> you know, when you go abroad, that black American privilege y'all kicks in, and all of a sudden you're not limited. If they see a black person walking, they may think you're a basketball player because you look like somebody because we tall. And they know that we could play basketball, but that's not what they mean. They don't question why you're in neighborhoods. They don't question why you're in certain bars and places. None of that happens. And you have never experienced walking into a place and knowing that you belong and what you can do in that room. You don't need to educate folks on your hair and things like that. They already love it. It's already great. You ain't got to fight with that. So launch your website and boost on social media because all of a sudden it takes you global. So when you do decide to leave the country and go abroad, you have something online that has all of your stuff selling what you're selling for two reasons. One is you can make money back home in the States because people can buy your books. They can buy your business. They can see what you're doing. You can still do business because you got a website. You're online. You're boosting. The other reason is because when you're abroad, which I learned by default, God's blessing, God's intervention, divine intervention as well again, is that people around the world can access your website. You could be in Italy. You could be in France. You could be in, in Asia, the Philippines, Africa. People can see your website. And what that little website you got that ain't nothing in the hood, it's a little simple little $300 website like the ones we do for $350 abroad. That's 10,000, 20,000. So when you walk into a room with your little three, four hundred, five hundred dollar website for your salon or your entertainment business or your whatever the hell it is business, your book or what you're consulting, your coaching, whatever it is abroad, it looks like a 10,000 site, 20,000 site, crazy credibility. And now you happen to be in this country with this profession and you're a premium. You're a premium as opposed to, as I said before, worth less in the States. So you guys go out there, launch your website, um, get online. Don't take this for granted because now you, you know, you're getting ready to go global. We're almost ready now. We're almost done. You're getting ready to go global. You're about, you're about ready. You get ready to go global. You get ready to get out here. You about to show these folks what they're doing. You about to show folks that you ain't playing no games, you know. And at the end of the day, um, mm, this next one, y'all, um, may not be a big deal for y'all. It may not be that that big of a deal. But you know what? Before I go on, you guys, wait a second now. Um, let me do this real quick too. Let me do something real quick here. Um, let me give you. Let me give you guys this promo right here. If we're talking about this. I want you guys to see that in the day, it's not a big deal. You can have a simple website. You can get things done. You can you can you can push things. You can. Um... Okay. Yeah, so I got I got to figure this out somehow. Um, let me see here, y'all. Yeah, let me go here. But you guys, the key, the reason that you want a website, the reason you want to make sure that you have all these things in place, is because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you are global. You understand that you only a nigga, you're only small, you're only whatever you feel, the insecurity. That's usually an American thing. It's hard for you to be number one. Now, America, you can have better opportunities. You can grow better. You can push things better. America, you know, people support. They spend money. You can be a celebrity. But I'm just saying, I don't care where you are, what you're doing as a black American, as a minority, small business person, you can do really, really, really good anywhere in the world. So you want to make sure that you are set up to be able to succeed globally. You want to be at a meeting and then abroad and say, yeah, look at my website or pay on my website, book me on my website, whatever it might be, you want to have that. Because when you go to abroad, they're looking at you as you're already, you're already the shit. You're already up there. You're already the one. Um, you're already really, really great. And a lot of folks don't understand when they do try to change their life and move abroad to understand that you're still an American. You're still American-based business. You can have an American LLC, an American C-Corp, all of those things. They do business globally. 
you know, they, they are, you know, it's not like you're just stuck and you can't do anything. So you want to have the website because whether you see it or not yet, when you do get off the plane and you start doing deals and building your life and things like that, you will realize that in the day, the website and boosting in social media and getting the word out there about what you do and what you can do and what you have done. When you do that, all of a sudden what happens is, is that you get that credibility. And again, with the racism kind of down and things like that, the credibility means much more. And a lot of folks, I don't know, when they see those little simple websites, those are big deals. It may not be a big deal in the States. And that's what a lot of things are frustrating to me is that in the States, it's hard for us to really thrive and to do very well because the standard is so high. You know, you really can't enjoy what you succeed. You really can't enjoy what you're doing unless you get to that that higher level, to that I've achieved level, you know, that I've made it at an arrived level. But that little three fifty, five hundred dollar website when you're going abroad, wow, it's all you need. And remember, the boosting is because what I'm saying to you for the boosting situation is that what happens is this. You want to have that website because you do want to get clients that are paying you in the United States or Europe, wherever you're coming from, that are going to your website and really pushing things with you. They're really marketing and buying from you because you want to be able to take those clients because now you're going to be global. You're going to at least have dual residency. You're going to have a little office or whatever, you know, abroad or whatever. So then what happens is then you can go through and have these little clients because remember 50 to 100 times earnings. So if you get a small little client in the States paying you two, three, four hundred, five hundred $500 a month, you get, you know, 20 of those, right? Then all of a sudden you balling. You got, you know, five, 10,000 coming in from the States. And so a lot of folks now realizing that and the power of that now, because now they're realizing that they can go ahead and they can actually have American clients. They can have people that are helping them out. And that, I think, is the difference about the, the way that things happen for us when we go abroad, as opposed to how things happen for them, is that the website leverages us into a situation where we are automatically professional and global and everything changes for us. That's something that a lot of people, they don't really, they, they're not able to really, 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 really do that black folks, especially we can do very easily. So go ahead and say, you know what? I don't just want to go here and do walk around and do these things, land off that plane with all these things already sitting there waiting for you. When all of a sudden you got the damn plane and you like, Hey, I'm ready to go. I do party planning. I got, I'm a chef. I got this stuff. Look at my website. Look at what I'm doing because it changes the game. People changes the game. So I just want to put that out there for you guys and reiterate that, leave that in your face for a while, because I really do think that a lot of folks take it for granted. Um, because we don't really have the opportunity. Um, so we don't really think that a website's a big deal or we think that in the States you kind of have it as cheap, but if you're abroad, it really changes the game for you. So keep that in mind there, you guys, to so launch your website. Um, the other thing I want you to go ahead and do, boom, you guys, you gotta take, a, take the leap, go, you, gotta, you gotta take that leap. You gotta get out there and do it. Just do it. Usually we just save to spend later. That's all we do. We save to spend, save to spend. That's all that we do. That's all that we're doing. We're saving to spend. We're not saving to make more money. We're not saving to grow. We're not saving to, to, to invest. We're saving to spend on something else. And that's where they get you. That's, that's, that's the, the, the new corporate lifestyle slavery that I'm talking about. That's what I mean. You know, I'm saying to you, at the end of the day, that's not the way you do it. That's not the way you're going to get free. And it's hard for you to understand how you can get free, how you can get out there, how you can start your life again. If you're literally, literally for real, like no doubt about it, literally sitting up there broke all the damn time. Just do it, you guys. Um, and I'm saying this to say um, that this guy in the graphic you see, he's walking, he got a smile on his face because he's leaving, he's going to Bali, he's going to the Philippines Islands, he, he's leaving. And I did that. I was waiting tables, I had my business, I got my, these are all the things I did. When I got off the plane, I didn't know the value of my website. Because all of a sudden, when opportunities came, I go into a room, I have my calling cards, I have my stuff, remember, there's no racism. 
So I'm, I'm in country clubs. I'm at the Elks Club. I'm at the Elks Lodge. I'm at all of these places. I'm at the, the Malakiang Palace. I'm at the politicians' homes. I'm at millionaires and billionaires' homes. They could get my car, go look me up and be like, oh, okay, cool. So you can do this. You can. It changes the game because you, when there's no racism, discrimination, the playing fields are done, the game is changed. So you guys go out there, just do it. Um, like I said, usually we save to spend. Um, we got to change that whole mentality as well, you guys. Um, and understand one thing about that. Why not start by just spending everything to begin with? And I'm saying this, we work and save to spend. You ever wonder why you have to spend everything anyway? Why are you broke every month? Why are you broke every two weeks? I get the whole mentality of savings in America, but abroad, that's not how they think. They don't spend all their money. They live below their means, even if their means are like nothing. They're living below. They, they may save for something specific, but typically they're not spending all of their money because their lifestyle isn't making them do that. So it changes the whole way that you see it. So just do it. Just go. Just get out there. Um, at the end of the day, I'm debt free, you guys. Besides business investments, I am debt free. I have no credit cards. I have I have investments, though. My partners have, you know, we got investments, a million or whatever in investments, but no credit card debt. There's no shoes and Gucci's and on our on our debt. We're not paying for that. We don't even have a car on debt. Not yet. I want to get a new car. But we don't have that. That feeling, meaning you can just leave like this guy. You can say, okay, you know what? I have no debt. I'm not a slave to you. I can walk out here with a smile on my face and y'all looking all confused in the background because I don't have no credit card debt. I don't have none of that. I'm here because I want to be here. And I'm here because it helps my lifestyle. But if it doesn't, I'm not done. And I make the same amount as the average American, but I'm debt free. The same, the average American, I make the same amount of money out here. They do. The money goes further. I work less hours. Um, now I'm working on my wealth building now. American lifestyle greed and pretense is very expensive. It's hard to save, invest, and grow when your lifestyle is so high. Oh, my God. How do you do it? Like, <laughs> you ever thought about that? Like, how do you save? right? To invest when literally at the end of the day, you literally, no doubt about it, you literally can't, how do you do it? How are you going to, how are you going to grow? How are you going to make things up? How's that going to happen? You know, and a lot of times it doesn't happen. A lot of times we never get to the point where we actually can sit up and really relax because literally we are working broke every single day day. We're literally working broke. So I want to make sure you guys, when you guys do all this and you guys get all these things, eventually you got to do it. Eventually you got to leave the office. You got to leave the business. You got to make this trip. You got your passport. You got your the two-way ticket so you can come back home. You know, anything happens, you can come back home. <laughs> Keep that in mind. So when the stuff opens up, you guys can get out there. I'm going to refill my coffee, you guys, and we're going to come back into getting to the last one. Um, the last one here, we're talking about surrender and immerse yourself in this new culture. And then I got a bonus for you at the end, for you staying here to the very end. The bonus for you is going to be, I'm going to be talking about friendships and dating, because a lot of you folks are single in America. Are you you're newly single? Are you friendships and dating abroad? When you're going back and forth is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Um, and I want to talk to you about that. So you guys go grab your snack and come right back. And we're going to get into this a little bit more. We're going to close this out. So share this, like this into your friend, but grab a snack and come right on back. Having a good, having a good time, people. You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson. Go grab a snack and come on back.
success is for everyone, you're special You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson Kareem Jackson is here Turn your dreams into reality Remember baby, success is for everyone Live on the set, new shows weekly Success is for everyone, baby. You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson. Yes, let's go. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back, you guys. Glad that you're here. I appreciate that. Sorry for the delay. It's always a crazy delay on here. Thanks for the delay, you guys. I saw your comments. I was typing back to y'all. That's when the three, two, one count went down. I was like, oh my God, let me get back over here. Um, I want to say a big thank you to you guys over here on LinkedIn. Erickson, thank you for watching as well. Erickson Tagahashi, thanks for watching from the Philippines. I appreciate that. Um, also, Miss Chandra G. Thank you very much. Looking for opportunities. It's on LinkedIn Live, you guys. Thank you also, um, Miss um, Aisha Augusta Farman. Thank you very much. PhD student psychology intern at Forensic Psychology or Psychiatric Hospital. Um, she's in Gibson, Sharon. Um, wow. Okay. Thank you very much, you guys. Like this and share this with your friends. This is really a great situation. I'm just trying to really give some insights on you guys for that you can kind of understand what I went through, how I did it, and why I did it, because a lot of you guys are wanting to do that right now. So, you guys, this is our last one, you guys, here. I want you guys to understand one thing. When you go over here, I kind of touched on it before. Go ahead and make sure that you guys immerse yourself in the lifestyle. Surrender and immerse yourself into the new lifestyle. Go ahead, because the only way you're going to learn how to change your life and to do the things you want to do and live the life and save money is by not bringing all the American crap with you. The world knows the truth. They saw it no matter what the American books say. The world knows Negro slaves built and continue to build America. The world know, knows the, the world now is very aware um, that America got ahead because it had held onto Negro slaves for centuries after the world outlawed it. Same now with COVID-19. America will go to work and it's just, you know, America would, you know, held the Negroes for centuries. America is gonna go to work and just overpower the health workers. The American economy has always been priority number one, not the workers, not the family, not the people, not whatever. The economy is number one. They said that um, the world also knows that America owes us Negroes. And so they want us for themselves. The America wants black folks, minorities to go around and countries around the world have billion dollar tourism investment campaigns targeted at black folks, at minorities. So understand you guys that when it comes down to it, it's one of those things where it's really a good time right now to be black around the world. So when you go out here, this picture here is a white girl, um, but go out there and really like they do. We, a lot of us black folks, we, we do it innately, but we don't do it all together. But understand in the day, go to the country where you're going and leave everything behind, take a little bit and immerse yourself in their culture. One, it's going to give you the benefit of that dollar conversion rate. You're going to see the value of what you know, what you bring to the table, no different than we have a client, Dr. Maxine, who's doing wells in in, in, in Africa, um, like water wells, right, for bringing water. People walk, walk miles, days, a week just to be able to get water to bring back to their village, right? You've heard about that. That's a real thing. But us, the innovation is simple. We could help out so many. And usually it's not about us helping them out like a lot of the other components that go into it with the savior mentality. We had a campaign here for three years, a camp where we had Americans come to the Philippines and we had about 300 kids that we worked with doing a football camp. And the camp, the, the tour, the trip 
was not for the kids. The trip was actually for rich black folks. This is after the recession, a lot of depression. A lot of folks lost everything. They were hating their lives. We knew pro we had personal friends that committed suicide. So this campaign was for Americans to come and to live in the Philippines, in the shanties, and see how happy and loving the families are. You live in a shanty, but you've been divorced. I mean, you've been married for 30 years. You live in a shanty, but your kids are happy. They're healthy. They're having fun. They got food every day. They got a roof over their head and they're happy. And a lot of Americans were really shocked. We had diplomats who came. We had NFL football players that came. By the way, if you guys look, um, Anthony Trucks here on LinkedIn, brother, shout out to Anthony Trucks. Anthony Trucks came here with that whole campaign and it changed a lot of their lives. We have video of them crying because they are the ones that were changed. They're the ones that were enlightened. Yeah, the little things you had are great and it was wonderful, but they're not so materialistic. So the Americans are the ones that actually changed and learned how to appreciate their life even more because they saw how other folks lived. And you can't get those things. This whole situation of moving abroad and all that is not going to help you if you're bringing the American baggage with you abroad. You want to go there, immerse yourself in the culture. I said, look at Eat, Pray, Love, because she did that. And even if you do go back to your condo or your house or whatever you decide to do later, you will go back different. You'll go back woke, refreshed, and inspired. And maybe you will learn how to live much more simple and enjoy life more than working for all this crap, which just adds hours onto your retirement. It, that's all it does. You know, every time that you're spending money shopping to keep up with the Joneses out there in America, all you're doing is taking away from your retirement, taking away from your child's inheritance. And when you go and immerse yourself into these cultures, you guys, like this young lady here is doing, what happens is you really see how wonderful they are, how America, we are a wonderful, great country. And we've done so much for the world between going to the moon and, and the internet and all those things. But it's hard for us to enjoy the fruits of our labor and the benefits of our of our existence when we don't travel because we really don't go out there to places that really and truly they're still in the era where they really appreciate life. Do you guys realize here in the Philippines during COVID or whatever, there's no I don't I don't hear about any suicides. I don't hear about any divorces. No one. There was a little bit of, of help here and there from the local, you know, politicians that help their communities and things like that. But there was no one that got checks. There's no one evicted. Maybe a few, but th th that's not a thing, right? How is that? How is it the richest nation in the world? People are crazy dependent on the government. Companies are dependent on the government. And it's not that I'm judging but it gives you a different perspective when you realize there's people out there that work because they enjoy it, because it feeds their family. They don't work because they don't have a choice. They don't, they're not stuck here in this situation or in this neighborhood or in this job because they have all this debt. And it changes your perspective. So when you go there, immerse yourself, you guys, into the lifestyle. Um, and I told you, by the way, you guys, um, that if you stayed here to the end, I had a bonus for you. Uh, let me go ahead and check here on LinkedIn. I'll get to some comments here, you guys. Um, I said a shout out to all of you guys. Thanks for messaging. I appreciate all the love and the watching and all that great stuff here. Um, you guys, really, really a thanks for the warm welcome. Joe Chongson, thank you for saving that to you as well. If you guys are looking at crementonio.com uh, at, at our show there, live on the website, thank you very much as well. Um, and thanks for all the comments on our website. They just told me we have over 500 comments on our website. So and our website has more views than our YouTube channel and our LinkedIn channel. Our website, thank you guys for going there. I love you. You guys, I, I'm telling you, if you don't have a website, you can't, no one can do it. And thanks to my IT guys for loading our series live onto our website so people can also see it and search for it. Thanks for that. You guys are here till the end, so I told you I was going to do this for you. Um, the bonus I have is this one, you guys. When you are looking at going abroad and everything, relationships and dating, okay, y'all. One thing I'm going to tell you right now, and let me pull this down here. Um, let me actually, you know what, these both have to do with each other, so let me keep these up here. Because <laughs> once you immerse yourself in the culture, you're going to meet somebody. 
And let me give you a caveat. And I'm telling you, black folks, minority folks, we usually don't have this issue. Um, a lot of white men have this issue, um, but we don't. But understand this, all of a sudden, when you get off that plane, typically you're a millionaire now. You just won the lottery. Your little money in your pocket is worth 50 to 100 times earnings more. The knowledge you have within certain levels of, 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 the, of the, the, the community are very much higher. Um, and we don't have a superiority complex like some people do as blacks and minorities, which is a big advantage for us. Usually when we date, we date equally yoked, whereas we don't really, a lot of other people, okay, um, who travel, especially white men, I'm just gonna say white men, usually they date someone that is not necessarily on their level, so to speak. So they usually are controlling of the situation. They're usually, taking care of that person. And there's that stress, there's that burden. Us, not so much the case, which is a blessing. So what happens is, is the truth is that for many, perhaps most, by the way, you guys, actually it's easier, safer, and better to date internationally. Um, depending on where you go, you can get friends um, on an all new level and you can date up if you know what I mean. You can, you can as a black and minority, you can actually date up. Whereas usually a white guy is dating down, so to speak, right? Someone he can control. Maybe they relate intellectually and in the States with white privilege until they travel. They don't really know what level they're on, right? But typically we date equally yoked or we can date up, right? Um, and, and I can also satisfy, uh, it, it can also satisfy those simple lifestyle and partner cravings you may have, right? Um, that means just, you know, you can meet somebody and just hang out for a little while, get, you know, get, get your groove on and you ain't gotta really have a relationship at all. That's one thing. It could also get you dating at a level or two up if that's what you desire. If you want to desire, you want to date higher, typically you can date someone higher. You can get into rooms you couldn't get in in the States. Um, as a black minority person traveling the world and, and making this thing a lifestyle, right? Either way, um, whichever makes you happy, you need to be smart and realize that um, no matter where you go, if you attract losers, you will continue to attract losers. So if you're having an issue with dating in America, you're just gonna bring that dating thing here. So you need to check that before you come. Um, so you wanna make sure that you do some soul searching. You want to prior you wanna, you know, prioritize things. You wanna, uh, you want, a heart heavy discovery into this area before you start dating. You wanna really look into yourself and figure out, well, who do I need? What do I really like? Because remember, you've changed. Remember, you got everything, you shed it all your shit, you're free, you're, you've never been able to do this. You literally will change. So when you do that, really soul search and look into your soul and think about who do I wanna date? If you're bringing your family and things with you, then that changes the game a little bit. But if you're typically single, and this is a really great time for you to take a trip, to go abroad when they open things up, you want to go ahead and understand that. So a hint, if you meet someone, they quickly tell you their personal problems, um, talk about how broke and poor they are, and ask you how much money you have or you make, that may not be someone looking for love from you know, from a spouse. Um, that being said, in some cases, that's the perfect relationship. Some people are looking for someone to take care of. They're looking for someone who needs them. Okay. They're looking to help someone. And that, that's black or white folks and doesn't really matter. But usually black minorities, we don't do that. But typically a lot of folks do do that. I know that men who love taking care of women and their families, and it makes them feel good. So that's a good relationship for you, but you need to do your soul searching and figure that out. Because for you, maybe abroad when you were at home, you know, or yeah, when you were abroad, like back home, right? Maybe your issue was that no one needed you, that your spouse, your wife, whoever didn't make you feel loved and needed. So you are enjoying now, you feel needy, you feel great. And now the benefit is that now the little money you had can really help someone out. Whereas back home, maybe you felt like a loser. You know, maybe you felt like an imposter. So keep that in mind as well, you guys. And then I know others are looking for someone to build a business with. That's what I was looking for. I wanted a partner in life. I wanted a partner in business. I wanted to grow. Even now we get assistance. I always say, you know, if you're my assistant, or even if you're at the house, if you're a butler, you're gonna be part of the business. You need to learn something because we're a business-minded family. I came from three generations of entrepreneurs in black America. 
So what you're looking for, be clear about that. Um, and also some and are more progressive. So they look for someone more equally yoked, like someone that wants philanthropy. They want to do business. They want to have an executive career. They look for someone to level up, to help them to get where they want to go. Because remember in America, it's not that you as a black person who's traveling the world had any issues. That wasn't the issue. What it is is that when you were in America, you were held down. And now you can spread your wings, you can soar, you can fly. So when you're dating someone, it changes the dating game. You're dating out here, unless you're building something, you're stressed about that, the issue is not going to be arguing over the, all the time because you can't pay the light bill. That's not going to be an issue usually anymore. And if it is an issue, it's not like it was before at home. You know, so that changes the dynamic of the relationship. It allows you to really enjoy the relationship more. Um, you may decide, um, but the key here is happiness, right? A broad happiness is an ROI. People want to work where they're happy. They want to be where they're happy. People abroad are not like Americans and Westerners. They choose to work. They don't have to always work. They can live real simply with their family, their friends, with the rice and some food or whatever, every day have a good time. Every week or twice a week, they can get them a bottle of jack, a yak and, and have a good key cackle and drinking session, and they're cool. So at the end of the day, happiness is really important thing. And if you're looking to change your life, it's good to be around folks where they want to be happy. So now you can choose to be simple, to be not simple, to be happy, to be not so happy, to be focused on, you can literally choose the lifestyle that you want to live. Um, so breakups abroad, by the way, um, I got to say this because I know a lot of you folks have had it, it happen to you. Um, there can be devastating. So do watch yourself, especially if you're white guys and you're traveling the culture, the way that you are, the things that you value, a lot of times that's going to set you up for issues abroad because it typically a black foreign, you know, a black American, we're not going to really necessarily meet the woman of our dreams in a bar where a lot of white dudes, I know they do. We're not just going to necessarily meet our friend, our, 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 the woman of our dreams or be looking for that in a, a party situation or a, a brothel situation or, you know, on the streets. And we're not going to be looking for someone just because they're beautiful. So we don't have a lot of the issues and relationships that a lot of foreigners that I personally know here, I've dealt with in my, my, my shows and my, my publications at the U.S. Embassy and things like that with the diplomats that they have, where they've come home and everything's gone, they're robbed, all that drama doesn't usually happen to us because we usually date someone who's equally yoked. We know the family, we love the family, we know grandma, we are different dating. Um, and mind you, they know our family. So there's more of a dynamic there, but understand the benefit is that when you got that plan, you're a millionaire now. So you're gonna be either, it can work one of two ways. You know, you can either be a target for opportunist, which happens. I've had folks here that have visited. Um, usually I sadly say white men who have been kidnapped from bars, you know, very nice, rich millionaire bars, kidnapped in a car by, people that, you know, that, that took their money and took their phones and things like that, threw them out the fucking taxis and things. I, I've seen that. Um, but why were you trying to date at the bar? What are you doing? This is not America. You know, why are you not meeting professional women, professional men? You, this is your chance to level up. You can meet a girl at the bar in America. So why come to a country where now all of a sudden you are the, the, the bomb and then you want to meet someone at a bar? You're setting yourself up and typically they show off, you know, now it's different when you're six foot four, 250 and black popping bottles. But if you're a white dude, you're alone. You might not want to be popping those bottles. You may not want to, you know, just, just keep that in mind when you're dating and traveling, but ultimately dating internationally is wonderful. Um, you may want to do what I did was I had friends before I even came that I'd already been networking, using that skill, right? And, and connecting with people um, to where eventually the relationship that I have now, that's been a relationship we've been together 10 years, was a business partner that I met um, online through business. And we connected because we were both single. We were both in business. We were both dating someone at the time, but we created a business. And I initially outsourced to this individual's business. And that's how we met. And then 10 years later, we're still together. So things can happen um, and no drama, no issues. We built a company together, a whole lifestyle together, you know? So that's an awesome situation. So keep that in mind, by the way, you guys. Um, 
And I want to say this. I thank you very much. You guys for being here. Um, we're done. We're about five minutes over time. Um, we're done right now. I appreciate that. Um, thank you all on LinkedIn Live for watching. Comentonio.com. They've just showed me your messages. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate that. You guys are amazing. Um, I just saw you, brother. Um, thank you very much, Greg Wendell Reed. Um, thank you very much for watching as well. I'm glad that you're here. I just wanted to give you guys some insights on how I did it because a lot of y'all have been asking and I thought, let me just go ahead and give these folks what they want. Let me tell them how they do it. Let me tell them how it's done. And I'll tell you, the difference is, and I will say this is a blessing for us, as minorities, things are just different for us. We are very humble people as black Americans. We're so humble. Um, we're so humble. Um, and I think that a lot of people take it for granted um, around the world um, when they don't leave the West, when they don't leave Europe, they don't leave UK, they don't leave America, they don't really understand about the blessings that we have as Black Americans. And when you travel, you really see those blessings because you look at other Blacks that haven't become NBA stars, business people. They're not Beyonce. I mean, America has, we've, that's when you realize, wow, you know, we, slavery, the double-edged sword for that, was it taught us how to really, really, really do some phenomenal stuff? Um, so keep that in mind, you guys. And also do the last photo break. Alana Jackson's my baby sister, you guys. Go to Alana, um, uh, her, Alana's website. She has exclusively locked, L-O-C-D, you guys, dot com. That's my baby sister. We're getting her out here in Asia pretty soon. She's got some great products. She's got dreadlock. She's a celebrity dreadlock artist in Texas from Kansas City um, and, and grew up in California as well with us. So that's my baby sister. So I want to put her plug in the show. Um, beautiful girl. If you're in Texas, give Alana Jackson um, exclusively locked a shout out, you guys. Um, and we're done. You guys have been here for this episode. I want to thank you. Um, we're talking all about this this we've just finished talking about um, quit your job, outsource your business, leave the country and survive. That was our conversation today. And I want to leave with this video. Um, you guys um, out there, I want to leave with this video to remind you of how some people around the world support black folks. Here's do dirt day again, you guys. But anyway, we're done. Love you. Enjoy your Friday. If you're in America on LinkedIn, cheers to you. I want to put this little seed in your brain for the weekend. Understand if you're having some issues. Think global, y'all. Think global. See you next time, you guys. Cream Jackson live on the set. Love you guys very much, and I will talk to you later. It happens in America. It happens in America. There's still thing the blacks there. It shows on TV. It shows on TV. What's the difference between America and the Philippines? Nothing. So what is surprising here is surprising to us. We see a policeman there shooting a black guy there. How many times had it happened in the past? That's why you have the, demos, the, the violent demonstration. So, would it surprise you and me? Almost the same. One case only, three cases. Here. So what? It involves the same principle. Say for every one black there dead, you have about five here. And so... Does it make uh, this world more livable because there is less killing? The, when you shoot <laughs> a black there, dead, what is that? Is that not appalling? When you bomb Syria and Iraq and you kill communities and you kill children and old people and hospital, what is it? And why is it that United States is not doing anything? I do not read. Anybody in that stupid body complaining about the stench there of that? You cannot discount it. But what do you think what the Americans did to the black people there? Is that not rubbing out also? I say, well, it was just uh, one community there, one state of America. <laughs> well, but you have there about ten.
success is for everyone, you're special You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson Kareem Jackson is here Turn your dreams into reality Remember baby, success is for everyone Live on the set, new shows weekly You guys, 2021 is here and we're all trying to pivot and bounce back our businesses. We were warned in 2018 and in 2020, the entire world was on lockdown and everyone needs to rejuvenate, revive, and to grow their businesses. Entrepreneurs out there, business owners, executives, CEOs, we are all trying to figure all of this out. And if you're trying to understand how you can save money on labor costs, how you can save money on printing costs and operational costs, I have the secret, I've been doing this I've been blessed to be able to live the life that I wanted to live and to be blessed to be free, to live the life that I enjoy for the last decade. And I want to give that secret to you. So this is my LinkedIn live event. Hope that you guys enjoy this. You can see it on LinkedIn. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can also see it at KareemAntonio.com. But I'm going to be telling you all about in-house versus remote workers, also, also versus outsourcing. And I think that that is the difference between survival and death for many businesses, the same as it was for my business in 2018. I fixed my business, I revived it, I got the life that I never thought was possible in the same situation, a lot of that. So I think that I wanna help you guys to get the same thing. Maybe this isn't for everyone, but if you're out there and you want to figure out how to reinvent yourself, pivot your business, to revive everything, and to save money, which allows you to put more money into the things you want, allows you to have more time for the life like this, because I'm sitting here meditating, doing yoga, I've got phenomenal staff in Burkai, Philippines, you guys, going ahead, helping clients, writing books. We're doing five magazines right now. We have multiple websites that we manage, multiple social media accounts, LinkedIn accounts, and I can do it while I sit here in yoga because I have outsourced all of the things that do not matter specifically to my business and to my passions. So you can do the same thing. If you're doing social media management, if you're doing anything to do with the billing and collections and graphics and design, printing and all of those things, stop doing that right now. Join my LinkedIn Live event next week, you guys. We're talking all about this. And this saved me 50% of 50% people off of my labor costs. It also saved me 80% off my printing costs. It gave me the freedom to be able to live in the tropics. I'm in the Philippines Islands right now, you guys. I'm at the Riders Retreat Bungalow doing yoga, okay? That to me is amazing. And if you're a black minority entrepreneur, you know that it's very hard for us to get free from the rat race, to get free from the plantation. So if you're out there and you're curious about this, you're wondering how you can revive your company, how you can grow your company, how you can pivot your company, or how you can start your own business with nothing, with little to nothing in the bank. This is gonna be the LinkedIn Live event that you're gonna to wanna to see. So join here my event somewhere down below, you guys. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Please do, please do. And I want you to understand that this is the way the big boys do. This is specifically for middle to small to micro to dreaming newbie wannabe entrepreneurs. This is specifically for you. So understand, you guys, there's a big difference between nowadays Sorry, you guys. I'm really here at the retreat, you guys. We are really outside. I wanted to do this video because I want you guys to understand how serious this is for me. I took a moment out to do this. So understand, you guys. Nowadays, there's a big, big difference between in-house workers, remote workers, and also outsourcing. Okay, T-Mobile made more money than they've ever made in the history of their company in 2020 during the pandemic when we were all freaked out and suffering because all of their people went home and remote work. And many of those people, I mean tens of thousands, are never gonna go back to the office again. Many people who didn't go back to work or don't have jobs, they are out here doing gigs, starting their own businesses and all of that great stuff. There is a new normal and it's not bad news, it's all good news. And I wanna bring you the good news, people. So please, again, 
join and connect with me on LinkedIn and get into this LinkedIn Live event. Next week, you guys, we're talking about in-house, remote versus outsourcing, and also about survival versus death of your business, of course, because this is how I got free. Many of you guys are asking how I did it. You ask me all the time at askcrementonio.com. You go to the websites. I love you guys. You're really amazing. So I'm putting these LinkedIn Live series together. I've had a few of them already. So I wanted to personally invite you to this one coming up. In-house, remote versus outsourcing and survival versus death. So you guys understand. I'm here in the Philippines, live on the set of the Rise Retreat Bungalow, talking to you right now because I outsourced everything and got free. Again, you guys, you can look for my ebook on Google Play and the App Store too, Outsource Everything. So you guys, join the event. Please click here, somewhere here. Join the event, look for the link. This is going to be a great situation and I'm gonna be telling you personally how to do it. It's a two hour event seminar, you guys. So we're getting, we're getting into the deep, 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 dirty gritty of this stuff. And I've never done this before. I'm putting it all in. I want you guys to join me. No matter who you are, this is gonna be the great event for you. So again, Kareem Jackson live on the set, Minimalist CEO. If you guys don't know me, I help minimalist um, CEOs and people out there that are woke entrepreneurs to minimize their cluttered lifestyles, help them to outsource their business processes to make more money, more profits, and live the dream life they've always wanted to live while doing it. That's who I am. So if you're here for the first time, you guys, thank you for being here. Join the event. And also, go to CareerAntonio.com. Look around. There's great stuff there. Our sponsors, you guys, Outs.us, also amazing. They're the ones partnering with me in this event. They're our sponsors. So go to Outs.us, you guys, and see more things there. And again, connect with me. Send me a message below. I'm here for you. I love you. And we are here to show you how to reinvent and to pivot and to bounce back here in 2021. Cheers, successes for everyone. <laughs> and that means you. Cheers. Retailers file for bankruptcy for the same reason anyone files for bankruptcy. They don't have the money to cover their debt. A migrant couple who starts from scratch and rises to the top of the clothing retail industry. But then that dream plummets to the ground. The coronavirus pandemic is about to bring on a wave of bankruptcies in 2020. Big apparel brands and department stores like J. Crew, Brooks Brothers, Neiman Marcus, and JCPenney. What we're seeing is that it's really something that's unprecedented. We've seen huge drops in consumer spending, which in turn has... I'm telling you all about how I gained my freedom, how I live in the tropics next to the beach and a beautiful lifestyle that I still run my business. I outsource everything. My new ebook, it's out now, you guys. It's available right now, you guys. I made it to where freedom is here for you. You can get the same freedom that I did. It's totally possible and it's totally doable. And this has never been a better time than to do it. Grab my new ebook, Outsource Everything, on Google Play and the App Store, you guys. And of course, creamantonio.com forward slash my ebook. Outsource everything. Outsource everything. How to be a minimalist CEO by Kareem Jackson. An introduction for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Presented by Kane Co America and the Chunks and Group. To break free. Oh my God, you guys are still here. Hey, okay, you guys, I'm so glad you're still here. I'm so glad you stuck around to the end because I wanna show you some more about my book. I'm so excited about this. Outsource everything out now, you guys. It's out now, go grab it. On my website, you guys, crementonio.com. You can go to the App Store, any of these places. Yeah.
Hey, you eight, guys, Krim Jackson, eight, you are eight, live on the eight, set, and I'm going to take you around the world with me. Live my dream as a minimalist CEO. Turning my clients' dreams into reality is what I do, showing that success is truly, truly for everyone. Hey, you guys, I've got new shows weekly. Stay tuned and live your best life. Best life. Best life. Best life.